Do you want to get your new spaniel puppy to walk beautifully to heel? Do you want them to walk nicely on your left hand side with that loose lead where they're looking up to you for guidance and direction with confidence because you're their incredible, kind, loving canine leader? Then I don't worry because that is exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Welcome back to the Fenrir Spaniel Show. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO of FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly want to know about the incredible Spaniel breeds and then how to become a high-level canine leader that can raise perfect Spaniel companions. So if you are new here and you love these breeds as much as we do, then start your amazing journey by hitting that subscribe button, turning on the notification bell so that you never miss a future Spaniel video. Now let's dive straight into today's topic and today we're going to be talking about how to get your new spaniel puppy to walk to heel and get it right first time round. As a canine behaviorist one of the most common bad behaviors that people come to me seeking advice and guidance with is that their dogs are miserable to walk, they pull on the lead, they're really reactive, they bark, they lunge and it turns what should be a glorious experience with your spaniel into a miserable one. People then start to avoid walking them as much, they're not getting as much exercise and then that quickly devolves into quite serious behavioral difficulties and it will trickle out into various different areas and then we've got a real problem on our hands now we take pride in being able to help people with that it's something that's kind of our bread and butter we do it all the time but it's a difficult process. It requires quite high levels of canine behavior modification and hate canine training to unpick those bad habits and then to be able to start afresh with new ones. And it's also quite an expensive process. So what we like to do here at Fenrir is be able to help you stop that from happening in the first place. Save yourself the heartache and save yourself a fortune in having to go and seek professional help. And how we do that is we go help our clients, help the people that we work with, help the viewers of our channels be able to get it right first time around with our personal perfect puppy program the link to that is down in the description box below below by the way and part of that perfect puppy program we talk about our mandatory high levels of basic obedience one of those areas is about getting a dog that will walk nicely to heel and again we go into tons of detail in that program about how you do that but in this video i want to give you a quick overview of the principles and the theory behind how we do that and the way we do it is we kind of break it down into steps. The first step is that we need to let our new spaniel puppy know that this term heel, this random noise that's coming out my mouth that you have no concept or understanding of, what that noise means, what that word means is that I want you on my left hand side. Simple, dead straightforward. So to do that, part of step one is we use a lure marker and reinforcement process so we use a food lure we lure them into the right position on our left hand side when they get there we mark that position with heel or whatever word it is that you want to use and then we give them access to that food reward once we achieve that absolutely fantastic brilliant news you have taught your dog the principle of heel. We drill that over and over and over again and very quickly a breed as, as smart and as intelligent of all the spaniel breeds will quickly be able to understand, oh, that heel word means if I go there, something good's gonna happen. And again, by that stage, we're well on our way to success. Then we need to teach them, okay, well, we want you on our left-hand side, but I want you on my left-hand side regardless of if I'm standing still in a low distraction environment versus me going in any direction, making any kind of turns I want, I still want you on my left-hand side. So to achieve that, we then start adding in 90 degree turns, 180 degree turns, 270 degree turns, 360 degree turns, clockwise, anti-clockwise, steps, one step, three step, five steps. We might take a few steps forward. We might then do a 90 degree clockwise turn, two steps forward, 180 degree turn, come back the opposite way, six steps. And constantly we're making this a really fun, exciting, positive game where we lure them at all times. When they're in the right position, we use our marker, yes, good good heel good heel yes and giving them access to the food reward and praise setting them up for success and then praising and reinforcing that success brilliant excellent now we've achieved that we spent days weeks drilling that layering it up slowly but surely and our new spaniel puppy really is starting to understand the concept of walking nicely on our left hand side when we get there at that stage now we add the lead we haven't been doing any of that with a lead that's been with no lead to start with now we add the lead because we want the lead and this new heel thing that we've taught them to be one in the same so when the lead goes on 
you are on my left side, we're about to go on an adventure, we're about to walk. And you stay in that position until this lead comes off or I tell you otherwise. That's what we want to build up with our new Spaniel puppies. So that's kind of the next step. We carry on working on that drill with adding the lead to it. So the dog understands that the, the two things are, are one in the same. Now, when we achieve that and we know, excellent, right. Now we've got a dog that understands when it's on its lead, it needs to be on our left-hand side, looking up to us for guidance and direction and following us no matter where we go. Now we can start to layer up the distraction level. Now we can start to go out into the big wide world. And we need to do that slowly and steadily. We might go out to a low distraction outdoor environment like your garden then to a park where there's no people or dogs, then to a park where there's some dogs, but they're all the way on the other side of the park. Start with a, a quieter road where there's not many people. And then we build up where there's more people and more cars, and then we can go into towns and cities. And you get the idea, but slowly but surely, we're building it up. We're setting our dog up for success. Then we praise, reinforce, and reward that success. If we run into any difficulties, we simply take a step back. We carry on working at it at that level. And then we take an even smaller baby step up, and slowly but surely, we build up. We also start to remove the amount that we're marking that behavior. We remove the amount that we're praising that behavior. Our relationship with our dog, even though this is a very fun positive experience is we're not bribing them we're not going i'll only do that if you give me a piece of food we use food and we use rewards and treats but we use it to help them learn something new to help them teach the thing at this stage they know what it is that heal means they know what it is that we want them to do now we need to transition away from food and then lean more on our relationship that we've built with our dog and that is the is probably the most challenging part of this because you can have a dog that will work beautifully to heal inside but then you go out into the big wide world and they're like nah mate i'm doing this this is low Loads more fun. That's a clear indication of a breakdown in your relationship. And that again is kind of the essence of our everything we do here at Fenrir and our perfect puppy program. These obedience elements are important, but they're only one small piece of the puzzle of the bigger picture of having a perfect canine companion. And you have to address all of them, all of these separate areas. It's when they come together and it's that tiny little middle spot in between all of them, which is where that perfect canine companion lives. So it's really important that you build that relationship up from day one as well. So once we get to that stage, again, we start to remove the markers, we start to remove the reinforcement. And because we've set them up for success and we've ensured success 100% of the time from day one, the dog will very quickly start to understand the lead goes on. Yes, that means left-hand side, where are we going, boss? I'm dead excited, we're going on an adventure. And we've built that up from scratch, from day one, following a positive, fun, engaging relational way of working with our dogs now there is a few hurdles that people will commonly come up across when teaching their puppy to heal the first one is about creating the wrong association with the lead now as part of our perfect puppy program we only use the lead that we're going to walk our dogs on for two reasons first from day one is part of our basic femrear obedience drill as part of that drill we start to get the dog used to having the lead put on and off we need to let them know that it's nothing to be scared of it's completely normal and fine you don't need to freak out but also i need you to remain calm we don't want to get the dog really excited because again we're then setting ourselves up for failure before we've even gone out of the front door and we use that time in that basic obedience drill to really work on that other than that we do not use that lead until it is time to add the lead to our heel work some dogs that can take a few weeks some it can take a couple of months but if we do that then we guarantee success that that lead means heel they are one in the same thing where people fall wrong with that is that if that takes a couple of months well will what are we meant to do when we go out exercising our dog or socializing our dog we obviously need to put a lead on them to keep them safe kind of yes i agree 100 percent of the time we need to ensure our puppy safety but if we're socializing the dog especially in those first couple of weeks while they've not had their injections we can hold them that removes that issue if we do need them to be on the floor especially for kind of more giant breeds not applicable if you're getting a new spaniel we can have them on the floor we can put the lead on but we can keep them on our left hand side we can practice our sit and stay and we can stand by a road and do some socialization and that allows us to help reinforce that on my left hand side calm and well mannered now if we're exercising the dog and we want them to run and we want them to play that's where we don't want them to be bouncing on the end of the lead and confusing what that lead means in those situations if you can't go somewhere where it's completely safe and you can guarantee safety rather than using an extendable lead or using the lead that you're going to walk them on get a really lightweight long line lead or get a run of paracords you can just tie a really secure knot on the collar 
and then jobs are good and we can drop that on the floor the dog will forget that it's even there it's not ruining the relationship and the connotation and association that we have with the lead that's going to be for working on heel however if something goes wrong in one of those god forbid situations we can quickly pick that up and reel them back into safety and then everybody's a winner we're not setting our dog up for failure we're setting them up for success that's the first common issue the second common issue is around a lack of patience and a lack of leadership skills now a good leader regardless of whether that's in the human world or whether that's in our relationship as a leader with our dogs a good leader is a calm person they're consistent they're dedicated persistent hard-working committed all of those things are characteristics of a good leader if we take that mindset and that approach and we're patient and we set our dog up for success we set our spaniel puppies up for success you will achieve high levels of success if you're a little bit flaky you're a little bit inconsistent you get frustrated easily you're not patient you're not calm you do a little bit of work one day because you were motivated and then you lose motivation for a week and then you pick it back up the following week and expect it to have been successful don't be surprised when you don't have a well-behaved spaniel in the future to have that high level canine companion and for you to be a high level canine leader you need to personify those high levels of leadership characteristics so why you're getting that puppy into your home maybe you've just started it's not too late even if you've got a dog that's eight years old it's not too late to become a high level canine leader start to develop those characteristics it's a choice when you have that rough day that long day at work and you don't want to go out and do some socialization or you don't want to work on your heel training go no i'm gonna do it i'm dedicated i'm consistent and i'm hard working if you take that approach to your relationship with your new spaniel you will have a happy spaniel a content one one is relaxed calm and happy because it knows it's got a high level canine leader that can look to for guidance and direction being soft with our dogs being inconsistent pandering to them babying them too much it's an inconsistent it's not what a good leader does and a dog that lives in an environment with people like that doesn't know where to look to for guidance and direction because they don't respect you as a leader that when they don't have that guidance and direction with spaniels it's the most common thing i see it then causes that anxiety and that fear of i don't know what to do and i don't know who to look to for guidance and direction nah! and then that all spills out into negative behaviors be a calm consistent leader we don't need to hurt our dogs we don't need to be punitive but we're just calm consistent leaders and you will have happier dogs for it i absolutely promise you so i hope that video was helpful if you enjoyed it hit that thumbs up button remember don't forget to subscribe because we've got two new spaniel videos coming to this channel every single week so i can't wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the femre spaniel show